Hello, everyone. Welcome to another segment of Channel 781 News' City Council Debrief. Um, I am your host today, Chris Gamble. Uh, Josh couldn't be with us today, and I'm joined by James Krakelis. Hi, everyone. Um, so the City Council today was a little longer than usual. We had three public hearings um, and a couple of resolutions that were kind of interesting. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, in keeping with our tradition, just reminding people of some community events. Um, we have Pride coming up on June 4th. Uh, the committee doing that has spent a lot of time working together on that. It's really coming together. I hope people come to this because we got a great lineup. We got great speakers. It's, I think it's going to be a good day. Um, and then as well, we have Juneteenth, uh, public celebration in Waltham. I think the first one in Waltham, uh, which will be on Monday, June 20th. Um, if you have any other community events you want us to advertise, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I think we want to do start with a correction um, about from our last committee meeting uh, debrief. Uh, James, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, I can take that. So it's uh, one thing I wanted to uh, highlight from our last meeting that we kind of lost over was that one, it's rare to see anything happen quickly in city council. And with the, the resolution that Councilor Paz brought forward uh, to memorialize Virginia Monroe with the gazebo, the first pushback it received was from Mr. Fauci that there had already been a correspondence to the mayor in March, as if three months was too soon to try to issue a follow-up. And based on the input of both of Fauci, O'Brien, and Vidal, the motion that was present the motion that was presented went from one to honor Virginia Monroe to one to just invite the mayor to discuss naming a variety of monuments that are already on the docket. And it, that, that's definitely something that should be a highlight, I think, when we're talking about like a black woman, a woman of color, civil rights leader trying to get memorialized. And we have to talk about everyone trying to get memorialized rather than her. So, Chris, do you have any thoughts? Again, it's it's just a uh, it's just a shame how all this works, I guess, and how the city government has to. It's very bureaucratic, I guess, too bureaucratic in a lot of ways. Moving on, uh, just a couple of notes about this meeting. There were three public hearings. Um, I think Verizon was up first. Uh, total bore. Um, nothing to comment on there. The second one was about this building of a laboratory on Bear Hill Road. It was going to be a massive, massive project. It's already gone through the ZBA and it's already been uh, the Zodem Board of Appeals. I'm um, sorry. Um, and it's already been approved there. So I don't really see this like not being approved in the city council, but it's a huge, massive laboratory. It needed a special permit because it needed more uh, usage from the area of the parcel of land than normally. Um, and so there were uh, some back and forth from pretty much every single city councilor. I think every single city councilor asked a question. Um, and uh, what I thought was interesting was that uh, the carpenters, the union carpenters um, from the city uh, came in and were uh, trying to gather support for local union um, labor being used in the construction of this. And whenever this happens, everyone never says yes or no, um, if they're gonna do that or not, because they don't wanna you know, put themselves in a, into a box. Um, but I'd be interested, I know maybe we'll, we'll get um, Tom, our friend, Tom Geary, who is now the president of the Carpenters Union in Waltham, um, to chat about if it's beneficial to have those meetings because you know he goes to them and he advocates so it must have some beneficial some benefit to the choice of labor uh for these projects but you know they're they're not forced to the city council can't vote that they use labor union labor on a project so i'm curious uh you know what the thought process is behind that and if it has been successful um anything on that i just wanted to point out that the uh reason for the like the height discrepancy or like the need for a special permit it was partly because this is lab space and the height of the floor the floor to ceiling height in these things is i guess standard around 15 feet rather than 10 feet per story so they're spending it like it's just because it's like more, higher ceilings and more ventilation requirements and different like in the 
like I guess the thing that's putting it over the final height requirement of the thing was that it has like a large mechanical like I think HVAC system on the roof in support of all that. And yeah, it's it's just it's a what it, it's a, a more intensive use case, and they're, but they're also not going to have any external fuel containers or anything either. So that's good. Um, what I found interesting was uh, during the meeting, uh, traffic got brought up uh, by George Darcy, and uh, they asked the um, person behind traffic for this project what it was going to do to the area, and they said that the traffic commission in Waltham already gives um, leaving that area of 128 Bear Hill Road a C during peak hours. Um, in the evening and but you have to remember that there's a million projects going on in that uh area there's two there's one apartment complex there's one commercial project there's five dispensaries all vying for uh uh a permit and then on top of that the entire traffic structure is going to change there's going to be huge construction going on uh, which is like a boogeyman of a thing because i remember when that was talked about in like 2017 um and so if eventually they're going to start constructing this and it's going to be a nightmare. And so they said, taking into account um, all of those, it's going to be an F. Uh, it's going to be rated an F at peak hours. So I'm sure people that are complaining about traffic, it's going to get much, much worse for that area. And there's really no, and they said that there's no real solution they have in front of them uh, right now to alleviate that. Uh, so uh, good luck with your cars. And also blasting. And then, yeah, there's going to be some blasting. I mean, the, the lawyer, um, you know, he gets paid to say that it's not going to be a big deal. Um, but who's to say uh, if that's actually going to be a big deal or not? Um, third public hearing was a, another, uh, speaking of dispensaries, another public hearing that had already been done uh, previously. There's a trend now. This will be the third uh, dispensary that has come to Waltham uh, doing a second special permit public hearing with no no change. It's just for the new city council. And you know what? I skipped over the whole thing. You smoke weed. I get it. I don't want to hear about it for an hour. Another hour of life talking about smoking weed. I'm not, not, super, not super interested. Uh, and also, I'm not super enthusiastic about the um, petitioners anyway. Um, so there's that. Um, so there were two, uh, resolutions, both were, you know, semi-interesting. Uh, there was one, uh, both of these were led by our friend Colleen Bradley MacArthur. Uh, one was to encourage the Waltham City Council to proclaim no to the Uber question, which I'm going to ask James to explain in a second, and then send that off to the legislature who also is going to weigh in on it, I guess. Um, we'll start there. So I guess for some background, um, <laughs> Uber is a ride-sharing company that tends to exploit its workers as contract or as, as contractors, and has been seeking out getting legislation passed in states to support that. And it's already done it in California, and it is now here doing it in Massachusetts. And essentially, it's trying to make a uh, you know, two tiers of workers: one who's an actual employee, and the other is a contractor. And the contractor gets has far less protections, gets paid worse, but is more flexible. So yeah. that, is, that is essentially what is on the table here. Yeah, so Colleen is uh, putting a resolution which was signed by oh. six councilors, maybe seven. Um, you need eight to, to pass, um, urging the city to proclaim that we don't support this. Um, what's interesting is that it's going to committee of the whole, so it'll be recorded and everyone's opinion will be uh, very broadcast um, to the public. Um, so I'll be interested to see how it goes. I think the people that don't support it probably aren't going to say anything and they'll just vote no. That's what I think is going to happen because, you know, we're, this is the Waltham City Council. We don't usually talk about these big ideas. And that's going to be a talking point, which I want to address, is that they're going to be like, you know, we don't, we don't talk about these things. We're not supposed to weigh in on these things. But I want to make it very clear that the Waltham City Council does not weigh in on these things until a city councilor wants to weigh in on them. We've, it's been done before and it'll happen again and it's going to happen next week. We're going to talk about the Uber question um, on the city council floor. 
with Committee of the Whole, which is all 15 councilors. I'll be interested to see how it goes. I mean, I don't really, it's just a, it's just a proclamation. It's just urging the, the legislature to also uh, weigh in on it, but it's not really doing anything. Um, so it's, it's, is, it is a resolution and I'll be interested to see uh, what people say about it, if at all. Um, the second uh, resolution, also by Colleen Brown and Arthur, uh, was a pride resolution acknowledging pride in the city, um, which is the second time the city of Waltham uh, will, if it passes, um, have a proclamation acknowledging pride. Uh, the first one was in 2020, I want to say, um, by our friend Christine Mackin. Um, and it was nice. Uh, Paul Gates also weighed in on it. You know, I think he tried to be very neutral uh, about it, um, which was, you know, neither here nor there. Um, but that also went to Committee of the Whole. So everyone's opinion about Pride gets to be broadcast to the full city council, which was not what happened in 2020. In 2020, uh, it was in economic and community development, which was unrecorded. And while it was mostly positive, Kathleen McMiniman said that she was gonna vote no i believe she said she was gonna vote no and ended up and ended up after a very lengthy discussion only voting present which is essentially vote no um but we were was very very interesting and you know like i said we don't usually talk about these kinds of things we were usually talking about issues of you know, special permits and accountability and transparency and so you don't really get like like the national political beliefs of your city councilors until something like this happens. And now next week we got pride and we got uh, labor issues. So it'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting committee of the whole if people talk about it, they could just not talk about it. Yeah, I have to second that. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens with the, uh, with the gig, gig worker. So, and I think that they, what would end up the, the outcome of that is that it would basically be the city of Waltham saying we we want to or we, we disapprove of this and sending it up to the state legislature correct mm, yep yeah that was, that was the text of the resolution so yeah this is part uh, of a, this is part of a statewide campaign that's going on against this it's good to see too at, at sort of all levels yeah I'm, I'm watching uh watching hbo and i get ads from the yes campaign all the time Gross. See them on Facebook too. I haven't seen them on Facebook yet. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, so the last really notable thing um, was my uh, ongoing issue of my open meeting law complaint. Um, this The committee recommended that they did nothing wrong. And then I went back to the full city council. The full city council voted on it with a roll call. They all voted yes. And they took their sweet time talking about how they did nothing wrong. And I'm an idiot and uh they would never break the rules and i don't know i mean i i acknowledge that i was wrong and that they did what they were supposed to do but i'm very happy i did it because it made me realize that what they're supposed to do is like some bare minimum shit like literally post a notice on a board at city hall and that's it like that's what they're required to do. so i'm glad i learned that i'm happy i did it uh, i think it was, you know I think this uh, council communication I thought was hilarious. Um, and uh, they're probably going to email me uh, in the next couple of days saying, do I want to push it further? I'm going to say no. I'm happy. I can move on with my life. James, do you have any comment on my uh, weird complaint? As I was in attendance, it was um, actually not, not, not for this meeting, but like for the other one. It was interesting seeing the, the people then responding to this on the on the city council floor and like Mr. Fauci exp expressed how insulted he felt by the open meeting complaint and just had a very defensive orientation, which again, this isn't something you should really be defensive over. And I mean, I get that they, they, they were legally correct, which is what they care the most about. But just to be clear, and we're bringing up national politics, it's very easy for things to be legally correct without it being moral or ethically correct. And it's just, I'm really glad that he felt so insulted that his staunch commitment to the bare minimum was ever in question. <laughs> he insulted. He was insulted. John McLaughlin, uh, who's a member of that committee, um, you know, was talking about how transparent the recent city council is, 
and you know the most transparent the most Waltham City Council has ever been. And I, I want to be clear that that might actually be true, but it is because of people making these kinds of complaints. It's people, you know, watching these city council meetings. It's people, you know, demanding this transparency. Um, and so it is not because of the Waltham City Council that is the kindness of their heart um, being transparent. It's because people are demanding and that, you know, it's a good lesson. We should continue to do that. And there's plenty more the city council could be doing and we're going to demand that as well. And now, uh, we're going to try to continue um, updating folks with school committee minutes. Uh, we have someone uh, that is a friend of ours go into the uh, school committee uh, because there is nothing like this for school committee. And now we're going to try and incorporate that. And we're going to try to get better at doing this. Um, and so we're going to have James do a dramatic rendition of the school committee minutes. Um, so James, take it away. So first part of the school committee with student council input. Uh, the Walton uh, Family School addressed the school committee about their program and uh, about how they could provide support, the progress they've seen, and how they would like to continue and grow the program. They are currently only funded for three years. Um, they then uh, approved a one retirement, two resignations, and two parental absences, and the higher three long-term substitutes to replace them. Uh, they also went over the new COVID cases, and so week of Four, or of April 8th was 63, April 15th was 42, April 30th was 53, and May 6th was 45. The uh, Teacher Appreciation Day was celebrated at all schools, with, uh, which included uh, food tables, banners, balloons, and messages and sidewalk shop. Uh, for Arbor Day, they planted a magnolia tree at MacArthur Elementary School, and the kindergarten students named it Maggie. A lot, a lot of discussion around the new proposed schedule, uh, which is a four-day rotation instead of five. Uh, Al Jamal noted that uh, students are upset because they have uh, less chance to take the classes they want, and uh, Dr. Regan said that this is the most streamlined schedule that they've ever used. The uh, se section choices are based on enrollment, not just available blocks, and credited Doug Trudeau for, for tweaking the new high school schedule. Uh, Waltham has a, a new app for being created that will be used for communication with the community. It has auto translation and functions like Blackboard, but has its own social media system in, as a part of it. And it can be used to notify students and families about school cancellations. That is the extent of the notes. Um, going to a four-day schedule is a huge deal. Um, I'm curious about that. Um, also, Waltham Family School is a great uh, nonprofit. If no one's ever heard of it. Uh, it's about it's a dual language school where children. Uh, it's basically like an elementary school, um, but also it teaches the parents of the children. Um, English uh, language skills um, and other things like that. So it's a really, really cool program that uh, Waltham does uh, and you should support it um, if you don't do that already. And I believe that's everything. Um, like I said, uh, Committee of the Whole next week should be interesting along with the committees that go unrecorded. Uh, eventually those will be recorded, but until then we'll do that every single week. And uh, we'll be back next week with another debrief. Uh, thank you, James, for being co-host. Back next week for Josh at the DLA. Bye, yeah, everyone. for real. Yeah, I don't like I don't like hosting these things. So I miss you, Josh, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>